Fanta, ite to, muko so ibe kasi la, mogo shima fushiki la adabla sisan sisan sisan. I'm sorry. I apologize for upsetting you, but when you yelled, I went right back to that place that I vowed to never ever go again. Took me to that place when my mama's voice became an old so familiar ricochet and I feel small. Box thing closed up, trying so hard not to fail. Both by Africans turned American citizens, my whole life has been a hell. Mary, with these two cultural identities I carry, my mom and papa show their love through necessities. And sometimes that really gets the best of me. You're so lucky to have both of your parents in your life. Oh, really? So why am I searching for paternal love so desperately? Battling demons on my own because we African, we don't believe in therapy. And I swear I wish we were open to it because I needed one before I needed one. And I wish I didn't need one before I started seeing one because it's things like mental health in an African household that's rarely ever talked about. If you're depressed, they call you lazy and assume that's going to sort it out. And if you're sad and start crying, they respond, if I give you something to actually cry about. As if tears only require when you get beat, but they don't notice the days when you're low and the only sound you hear is your heartbeat. You've been strong for too long, you thinking about the feet, wondering if I was gone, would they finally miss me? Appreciate me for who I am and not who they want me to be. Loving the child right in front of you instead of comparing to other families. The lack of compassion left me. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for mother figures in my teachers and father figures in my coaches. Drowning in my own tears, but y'all have yet to notice. Truth be told, this left me lost for a while, trying to understand the Americans as a young African child, and it was hard. Some days I was embarrassed to say I was African out loud because I was tired of the same jokes I got laughs from the crowd. No one talks about the identity crisis children of immigrant parents go through. The days you're all alone just need someone to hold you. We try to do everything right, try to do what we're supposed to, but at the end of the day, we're all human. And we're not perfect, we go through pain, but we hide our scars because our parents can't see us hurting, tell us heinous things, and never once do they apologize. I swear, even when he lost his mother, I ain't never seen my father cry. To this day, I still replay the time my mother told me to end it all. I know she didn't mean it, but it's not a second that goes by that I wish that I was dreaming. Constantly in denial, because I don't want to believe it, but she told me this when I was 12 and again when I was 19. And some days, I want to tell her, be careful what you ask for, because you just might receive it. And I sit and I think about this pain, and some days I don't know if it'll ever feel the same. People walk out of my life and I let them leave. Not sure if y'all are the ones to blame. Still feel like that little kid who's waiting for the rainbow after the rain. Waiting for mommy and daddy to show me love in a different way. For them to focus less on their actions and more of what they say. Because sticks and stones never broke these bones. But your words, they hurt forever. And I'm hoping one day, as a family, we can heal together. Thank you.